Hello everyone, this is John Buck, uh, back with another Discrete Time Linear Systems video, continuing the Z-Transform story. This one follows on the one about the sort of big picture I've just covered, and this one will get more into the definition uh, and some examples. So if I want to, uh, for the, the definition of the Z-Transform, or if you grew up in Canada or the UK, they call it the Z-Transform, uh, but here in the US we call it the Z-Transform. Um, is that we say x of z is the sum over all time, so as n goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, of x of n times z of, to the minus n. And this actually looks, from, this sum ought to look familiar if you think back to when we first discussed the eigenfunction property for exponential inputs. Remember we saw that the the gain an LTI system applies to the input z of n was h of z as it was defined as the sum as n goes from minus infinity to plus infinity of h of n z to the minus n. And then so, in fact, what this is saying that, that we'll be using here, we now have a name, we'll call this thing on the left-hand side, the system function. And this is like a generalization, or it is a generalization, of the frequency response. And so we often say the system function h of z is the z transform of the impulse response. Another important property or question is that we say, well, that looks very similar to the sum we did for the Fourier transform. How are the two related? How can we connect it? And if I looked at that first sum for a little bit, you say, well, what if I make a, a, a change of variables or a substitution? If I let, oh, if I let, I replace z or substitute for z e to the j omega, then what we, what we get is the Fourier transform, right? Just I set z equal e to the j omega, and I still have the same sum as n goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. But then when I put z equal e to the j omega here, I end up with an e to the minus j omega n when I use properties of exponents, right? If I have e to the j omega to the minus n power, I can multiply the exponents. And so this is showing that the, uh, you say, well, now let's think a little geometrically about that z. That z is like, this is like a uh, complex number in polar form, right? If I put this in polar form, if I think of this as polar form, its magnitude is just the invisible one in front, and then it has an angle of omega. So as I let omega increase from zero upwards, this is really just saying in the complex plane, this is a circle of radius one and angle pi. Let's make a little sketch of that. If I draw my not very good circle here, clean that up a little bit. Right, we're saying that we have radius one or magnitude is, is one. So the magnitude of any of these polar numbers, any of the, the polar form here, any of these complex numbers, z equals e to the j omega, Right, which we could also use Euler's if we wanted to write as cos omega plus j sine omega. Also, when we write it that way, it makes it maybe a little clearer that if I take the, sum, the square, the real, and the imaginary part and add them, it's always going to be 1. Right, so I'm, I'm basically going around the unit circle here as omega increases. And this interpretation that the uh, shows us where, again, the Fourier transform is like the Z transform, but just evaluated on the unit circle. So we can also say that way, that the Fourier transform is the Z-transform evaluated on the unit circle. At the, we say unit circle, we mean the circle with radius 1. 
right? So z equals e to the j omega. And when we think of it that way, it makes it clear why everything, geometrically, why everything happening in frequency in discrete time repeats every 2 pi. That as I start on the circle and, and work my way around, as omega keeps increasing, by the time I've increased omega by 2 pi, I'm back where I started. So just like we've talked about, it's like the ring road on our campus. That as you drive around the ring road, you're going to keep getting back, seeing the same buildings over and over again. You might think omega, which is like your odometer, is going up, saying I've driven more and more miles, I've moved further from the origin, but not really. You're just coming back around to see the same things over and again. So that's geometrically why we see this periodicity in discrete time things that happen in frequency. All right, so that's the definition of the Z-transform. Again, to keep these, these short, I'm going to break this one here and then go on to do examples in the next one. So the next, uh, that's all for this video. The next video, whenever we have a new definition, the first thing we should do with it is apply to some simple examples and see how they work out and how it relates. Okay?